Hi, it's Alexis. And Christian from Tiny House Expedition. Today we're sharing a tour of a darling modern farmhouse. And stick around to the end because we're going to give you guys some ideas on how to make this guy work better for full-time living. So welcome to the Woodstock Farmhouse in the heart of southeastern Portland. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show you guys around. Yeah, let's go. While it appears to be a small two-story farmhouse, it's actually about a 500 square foot apartment above a utility space. Yeah, and utility, it's like either a garage or a garage and a workspace, something like that. It's not part of the Airbnb, so. Yeah. So this is the living space. Hey, it's cute, isn't it? <laughs> got a light farmhouse decor thing going on which fits the look of the farmhouse and what I really like about it Christian is how open it feels without being a studio space they're actually separate rooms yeah with having two it's actually three rooms because there's still a bathroom off of the bedroom so that's nice for a couple situation yeah if you want a little privacy or somebody's got to go to bed early because you're on different work schedules yeah totally or party schedules it is yeah. an Airbnb I guess it's true <laughs> So first, let's take a look at the kitchen. All right, here we go, the kitchen. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that this is a very classic tiny house kitchen mm -hmm. style. Totally. The U shape. Mm -hmm. And look, it's actually a two butt kitchen. <laughs> so you got two and a little bit more even over here, so. A little wiggle room, that's yeah, totally. nice. Mm -hmm. We can both cook together. Yep. But the best thing about this kitchen is the pivot distance. Mm -hmm. So when I'm making dinner over here, you know, I can easily reach for the spices, get something out of the fridge, come over and wash my hands. And look, all I've done is just gone from one spot to the other. And that convenience factor makes this my favorite kind of kitchen layout. And it being a two butt kitchen, when Alexis is over here cooking, I can be over here washing dishes and all that kind of stuff. So this is a great layout for a kitchen. And for a small kitchen, it's got a ton of storage. Like under here, mm -hmm. there is a drawer. It's almost like a Lazy Susan, but it's like stacked. So you open the door, pull the first drawer out and like slide it to one side and it magically appears <laughs> a whole set of your dishes and stuff on two other stacked shelves. So you can actually put a lot of stuff in that space all the way back in that corner. And that's killer. No one does small spaces like Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. And another great feature of this kitchen is on the other side of this island and it's seating. And there's even more dining space at this super cute farmhouse table. And on the other side is the living room which has yet another great Ikea tiny house staple. This is totally the <laughs> tiny house sofa. So this thing is in so many tiny houses and you know, it's because it's got storage under here and it's also, the big thing is the bottom pulls out yep. and then flops up so it's level with the rest of the sofa and it becomes what, like a queen bed almost? It's yeah. like, it's massive, it's absolutely massive. Great for a movie night or for a guest sleeping situation. Mm -hmm. We totally watched several episodes of Game of Thrones in our friend's tiny house on this sofa. At the Roaming Rins. Yeah. Uh -huh. Check them out. It's a very spacious lounge space they've created here. And I do really like that these two large windows bring in a lot of natural light. And your view is of the treetops. So even though you're in an urban space and there's a house just over there, you don't see it. And what makes all that possible are these cool shades because yeah, they slide down from the top and from the bottom. So being able to see that just treetop view over there is fantastic. And then over here is a cute little nook, especially for a little person who wants to go, you know, play a game or a puzzle or something. Also, I see some DVDs. DVDs. Lots of DVDs. You remember those? <laughs> it's been a while. The biggest thing that gives it the farmhouse feel for me are these floors. They look like pine. They look a little distressed. They're actually new. They're some kind of laminate. I'm not exactly sure, but they're absolutely the perfect thing for inside this entire space. Don't you just love being outside as long as possible when the warm months roll around? <sighs> but I don't love bugs buzzing around me or being too hot. That's why I'm so happy with our SunJoy pop-up gazebo. 
we can instantly create an outdoor lounge that's away from the glaring sun and pesky insects. It's a super easy to assemble 11 foot by 11 foot soft top gazebo that's portable. Use the included carry bag to take this baby from backyard hangouts to camping trips. It's designed to withstand the elements with a powder coated steel frame and weather resistant fabric top. The ventilated two tier roof provides just the right amount of airflow to keep you feeling cool and comfy. Attach the removable zippered mesh sidewalls to keep mosquitoes away. And when evening rolls around, set the mood by turning on the built-in solar powered LED lights. Save 15% off a Sunjoy pop-up gazebo today with our code TAG15. And this way through the blue sliding door is the bedroom. Let's go check it out. So this is a darling bedroom. Mm -hmm. You have a queen bed here, but you could easily put a king bed in if that was your thing. <laughs> It's very much like a regular bedroom. There's nothing tiny about this room. Mm -mm. You have room for furniture. You have actually four pieces of furniture in here. Totally. And a decent sized closet. So this is excellent for full-time living. But for you Airbnb guests out there, a small detail, but one that we really appreciate is the luggage rack in the closet. Oh yeah. Whenever I show up to a Airbnb or a hotel, I absolutely want to have a place to put my luggage. And so that's fantastic. Something else that this room has is its own mini split. So there's actually two in this little apartment, one in the living space and one in here. And I think what's great about that is that if you're gonna close the room, like I'm going to bed early and you're hanging out, we can still both be cool or warm, I guess, if it's the winter. I'm cool. <laughs> no, I'm cool. I'm cooler. <laughs> And just through here is the attached bathroom. So it's a sweet and simple little bathroom, which does indeed have room to wash, relax, and soak because it has a bathtub, which is fairly uncommon in small spaces, but always a luxury. And there's not much to speak for storage, but you do have the under the counter storage, which gives you some room for your things. So the Woodstock farmhouse, you know, we're above a garage and it's 520 square feet. And I think this is like an impeccable layout. Everything is in a really good spot. The kitchen is wonderful. And it is really awesome to have a bedroom and bathroom, you know, in another space. I definitely agree with you. And on the whole, I think this is already very well suited as a full-time living space. However, I have a few ideas for how I would improve it to make it even better. How's that? Well, for starters, when you first walk in the door and you look up at the staircase, there's no place to put your shoes or jackets. And I'm thinking, especially in Portland, which is a rainy place, it'd make a lot of sense to be able to hang up a rain jacket and leave a soggy pair of tennis shoes down there. And there's definitely enough space to have a small shoe rack and hooks on the back side of the door. And she's totally right that it would be great to have it downstairs. I mean, there is a rack up here and a shoe rack up here, but if you're carrying stuff or like she said, it's raining, mm -hmm. you want to leave the jackets in a convenient place, the shoes in a convenient place. And that place is downstairs. Just had an idea. What if you built some drawers into the stairs? Ooh. Now we're talking. Because the stairs go into the garage. I don't know what it looks like inside the garage, but it's definitely a possibility to do like storage drawers in that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that's a, a tiny house on wheels concept, I think, mm -hmm. bringing it into a foundation based small house. Mm -hmm. Dig it. <laughs> the next improvement I would like to make would be to rearrange the living room furniture so that one, you can enjoy those treetop views we were talking about earlier, and two, so you can have a place for a TV. Mm -hmm. Because right now it's in the bedroom, that's okay, yeah, but that's fine. personally, I'd rather have a movie night out here. She's totally right. Let me show you what she means. Okay, so imagine this. What I'm thinking is you take the sofa and swing it around this way. So like if this is a sofa, you turn it this way, 
put it up against this wall and it will still give you a little bit of room to come around and go to the bookcase, but you'll be able to sit here, look out the window and still watch TV. I think that's a really great way to set up this living room. Another way to maximize this 520 square feet is in the bedroom. And a way to do that is a Murphy bed of mm -hmm. all things. You could have it so you could use that room for other things like yoga or an office. You know, when the bed is up, you have a little bit more room in the space and it feels more like an office, that mm. kind of thing. Yes, I really like that. And particularly because when we're not on the road, we work from home, which I know a lot of you can relate to with all the remote jobs out there right now. So it's a great way to get a little bit more use out of this fantastic layout. And it'll feel a little different too. It'll almost feel like you're going to the office as hmm. opposed to like working in your bedroom, which kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. yeah. It walks the line. It does, it totally does. Another way to maximize the space is in the bathroom. The easiest thing you could do is put in a medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Then you got a mirror and you got loads of space for all your toiletries. And underneath the sink, you could easily install some shelves to make more of that space as well. Cut some of those cool Ikea slidey things that come out with, you know, it's like a drawer, but it's not a drawer front. It's a, you know. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Those things. So this great small space is above a garage in somebody's yard behind a primary residence. So that makes it an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit, specifically a detached accessory dwelling unit. So if you wanted to use this as a full-time home, what you could do is buy a property with the main house and build this in the backyard. Then you have the option to live in the small home and rent out the main house mm -hmm. or vice versa. And then of course you can always buy some land and then build this as your primary dwelling as well. Just land, garage with an apartment above it. <laughs> it's a really efficient use of space. Even yeah. with like a quarter acre, that would give you yard space. Yeah, totally. So, and we actually have a friend that just bought a piece of property that all it has on it is a garage. So, you know, those, those properties are out there. It's true. So lastly, I want to ask you guys, yeah, you can call this a garage apartment, but you could easily also call it a barn dominium because all that means is a living space above or next to a utility space. And in this case, it's a two car garage. But what I would like to do with it is make it like a one car garage and a little shop because that's what I want. I like making stuff. <laughs> yeah, I dig that. And you don't even have to use the downstairs as extra storage space, but you could because next to this apartment is a large attic space with loads of storage room for all your fun, you know, outdoor adventure gear. We just can't get in there, the door's locked. <laughs> or I'd show it to you, here's the door. <laughs> so what do you think? Barn dominium, garage apartment, does it matter? Yeah. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.